At the start of my senior year, a teacher asked, does anybody have a favorite equation? Now, as a math and science nerd, you can imagine that this is a hard question to answer because I do use a lot of equations in class and outside of class. So I thought about this. Hmm, maybe the quadratic formula, the cherished physics kinematics equations, or maybe the chemical formula for an SN2 reaction. However, none of these equations made the cut to be my favorite equation. Why? Because they all have a finite, limited answer, one single answer. So I decided that I would create my own equation, something that I am proud to call my favorite equation. Challenge plus uncertainty plus barriers equals possibility. As I reflect on my time here at Chelmsford High School, this equation has helped me in immense ways. And one of the most significant ways that this equation has helped change my life has been by helping me address the challenge of proactivity. A lot of our life is spent reacting to a situation, responding to circumstances and events that happen to us. And whether we like it or not, this reactive way of thinking greatly influences our education, our health, as well as our relationships with family and friends. So I sought out the challenge. How can I take on the challenge of becoming a proactive person? And I applied my favorite equation to this. The first thing is understanding that being a proactive person is a challenge. The second thing as part of my equation is understanding that there is great uncertainty when it comes to being a proactive person. We can't possibly predict and prevent every challenge, every problem, every circumstance that we find ourselves in. So there's uncertainty with what is the best way to become a proactive person. And what are some barriers to becoming a proactive person? It takes a lot of time, responsibility, and commitment. If you want to become a proactive person, you have to make sure that it is a high priority and a responsibility that you are going to take on seriously. While proactivity is a great challenge, it also is a great possibility, and that's what we're gonna focus on. Someone who is proactive doesn't allow circumstances or situations that they find themselves in to control their behavior, their response, and their actions. They realize that between a stimulus and a response, there is the freedom of choice. There is the freedom of our control over who we are and what we can do. Think about the last time you had a conflict with a friend, a family member, or a teacher. Did you immediately respond to them without even thinking about what you were gonna say? Or did you allow yourself to think about what you were going to say, to choose your response, to make an informed choice, a smart, better way of communicating with someone? That is being a proactive person. Viktor Frankl, the author of Man's Search for Meaning, said that between stimulus and response, there is space, and in that space is the power to choose our response. Now this is really powerful because Viktor Frankl was actually a survivor of a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. Such a horrible circumstance that he had to live through. But he chose to take from that experience something positive. He was proactive and found this freedom and choice between this event that happened to him and his response to it. I find that this is so inspiring and this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to become a more proactive person as well. So, According to existing research, there are three main factors that a person can become proactive with. The first is personal agency belief. Personal agency belief is the belief that you are in control of your actions and you are in control of the consequences of your actions, as well as in control of what the circumstances you find yourself in lead yourselves to. The next is intrinsic motivation. Someone who is intrinsically motiva motivated is a proactive person because they seek things that they are truly interested in. They're intrinsically motivated to whatever they, the, it is that they do and that leads them to become proactive in that area. And finally, emotional force. Someone who has emotional force is constantly formulating meaning in their life. When you have emotional force, you are a proactive person because you are emotionally committed to doing, finding the space between an event and your response to an event. So, 
how are we able to develop personal agency belief, intrinsic motivation, and emotional force? One of the first ways to do this is by understanding the difference between a growth and a fixed mindset. A proactive person has a growth mindset. They accept the circumstance or the situation they find themselves in. They accept challenges and they accept their failures. They understand that mistakes are a way to grow. And being proactive, they're able to use that freedom of that choice between an event happening and the response to it as an opportunity for growth. In contrast, a reactive person has a fixed mindset. They allow a challenge or a failure to control their response. They don't allow the idea of growth to make them become better. They avoid failure and they give up easily. So one of the most important ways that you can change your thinking from proactive to reactive is by developing, or from reactive to proactive is by developing a growth mindset. And the next way that I think a lot of us don't realize that's such a powerful tool for our own agency is the language that we use. The language that we use in our conversations with others and even to ourselves. A reactive person might say, I can't, I must, I have no control, I need to do that. Whereas someone who has a proactive way of thinking says, I will. I can choose a different approach. I control my response. I choose. Just take a minute and think about the difference between those phrases. When you are a proactive person, you are empowered that your decisions are in your hands, that you are in control of your behavior and your response to something. But perhaps the most effective way of becoming a proactive person is by understanding your circles. Stephen Covey, the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, came up with this idea of your circle of concern and your circle of influence. Your circle of concern includes all of the problems, challenges, stressors in your life that you may or may not have control over. And your circle of influence is things that you can do to have control over your response, your behavior, and your actions in face of challenges and circumstances that you find yourself in. So a reactive person will have their circle of concern, and then they'll have their circle of influence. But their circle of concern is so overbearing that it almost crushes and shrinks their circle of influence. They lose the agency and the feeling that they are in control of who they are and their choices. In contrast, someone who has a proactive way of thinking has that same circle of concern, but their circle of influence is expanding and it's growing. They are actively seeking ways to make sure that they don't allow their circumstances and situations to always be in control of who they are. To understand this better, let's look at my circle of concern. Some things that are challenges and stresses to me include responsibility, time, money, family and friends, college, uh, work, stress and anxiety. These are all things that are a part of my circle of concern. But this is my circle of influence. Hard work, managing time, self-discipline, and building positive relationships. If I focus my time and energy on expanding my circle of influence, I am actively seeking a way to become proactive. I am not allowing my stressors and concerns to shrink on what I believe I can do to address them. And we cannot possibly predict and prevent everything that's going to happen to us. A great misconception with the idea of proactivity is thinking that we always have to be ahead of the game and know everything that's gonna happen to us and prevent everything. And the reality is that we just can't do that. So a better way to approach it is to understand that there is space, freedom of choice, and control between our decision and choices of what we do and how we respond to situations that we find ourselves in. So what's my story? Why does proactivity matter so much to me? As a member of a lot of musical groups at my high school, I have found that the most intentional and purposeful work comes when the groups and myself, when we choose to be proactive, when we allow ourselves to make intentional decisions about our performance and how we're going to go on stage and what we're going to do, and we don't allow bad performance experiences or maybe not advancing in a competition to hinder our ability to choose what we do next. We're constantly seeking growth with our growth mindset, and we're 
saying, I can and I will, rather than I must or I have to. Another way is by understanding that leadership can be so drastically changed by being a proactive person. As a student leader and as someone who hopes to continue improving my leadership skills as I go to college and beyond, I have found that proactive thinking can really change how you view challenges and issues and problems in your life. You feel in control and you feel empowered that you can choose what the outcome is that you want next. And even if it doesn't happen, you still have space between something happening and what you're going to do about it. But perhaps the most important way that proactivity has helped me in high school is by helping me understand what my purpose is. I hope that in the future, I want to pursue a career in clinical genetics. Clinical genetics is all about bringing proactivity to healthcare by allowing a patient to predict and prevent diseases and giving patients the ability to choose and make smart, prepared and informed decisions about what happens next in their health. And that's how I want to use proactivity to change medicine and to help others in the future. So let's go back to my favorite equation. Challenge plus uncertainty plus barriers equals possibility. I believe in the power of challenge, uncertainty, and barriers. And I believe in the power of proactivity. So let me ask you this. Find one thing in your life that you believe you are reactive in currently. How can you change in that area and become a more proactive person? Believe in the power of proactivity and believe in the power of my favorite equation. It helped me find my purpose and I hope it helps you find yours. Thank you.